What's up, you phonies, and how's it going? Welcome to another video. I got the question a lot how to make a moody, rainy scene in Blender, and that got me thinking how would I make that? And the thing is, there's always more than one way to do something, and there's always an easier way, a faster way, a harder way, the right way, but it always depends on the shot. It really always depends, depends on the shot. It's not always the same answer. So in today's video, I don't just want to show you how to make it. Yes, I will. But I also want to walk you through the thought process. When you get into the situation, you have to make something or you have to solve a problem that you kind of get an idea how to approach something like that. Because as a VFX artist, you are a problem solver. And that's why I'm making this video a little longer, but I think it's gonna benefit you more. If you don't care about any of that, just skip to the timestamp where I actually start the tutorial. But if you are actually interested in what I have to say, then keep watching. Okay, let's say the client wants moody rainy scene and then my first question would be okay do you need this to be live action or cg or mix if it's live action then of course i need haze i need a haze machine i need a rain machine or something what makes waterfall or actual rain or i actually have to wait until it's actually hazy those are really my only options if it's a complete cg scene how do i do that Okay, I need my scene, of course, and then same thing. Okay, I need some kind of fog or haze, and then I need to make the rain. How do I make the rain? I could make it with particles, which I'm gonna show you in that video later, but I also, maybe I can just put a filter of rain, of, you know, heat rain on top of the video. Maybe it's gonna work too. And before you think that's gonna look cheap, think again. Because in that scene, that's exactly what I did. So I wasn't even thinking about doing a particle simulation for that rain because I knew nobody's gonna see it anyways. But there is definitely cases where you want to use real particles, you have the whole feel of 3D, and that's what we're gonna do now. So we are here inside of Blender. As usual, we have nothing in here. We have a camera, we're gonna delete the camera, and we have Mihal and we're not going to delete him because i'm going to use him later first things first we need a scene and i'm not going to walk you through the process how i make the scene i'm just going to build it as quick as i can okay our scene here is done. It's obviously not perfect, but it's just for tutorial purposes. But now it's time to make the rain. And when you make something, it doesn't matter what it is, but for example, it's rain. Just think of your tools. Well, what, what do you have available to make something like that? So to make rain, what is rain? Okay, it's water, so should you do a water, like a liquid simulation? That would take a very long time to render, technically possible. What else is there? Oh, particles. You can just make particles fall. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna have a particle system right above our area, which is interesting or like necessary. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a plane right basically like a roof over everything what we need here so i'm gonna shift a and the mesh and the plane we have our plane here i'm gonna bring it up just high enough so it's like out of frame i'm gonna make it bigger to um you know where our camera is it really it's really hard to say how how big we need this because the problem is the bigger the particle system the longer it's going to take to render so I'm gonna to try to keep it as small as possible. So technically where the camera is and maybe where the building ends. So let's make it the same size. But we definitely need it where the camera starts. So it, the raindrops fall right in front of the lens as well. Otherwise, it was just defeat the purpose. Unfortunately, every time I, I switch to cycles, um, my blender crashes. So that's gonna be a little tricky to show you progress here, but uh, you're definitely gonna see the uh, end result by the end of the video. 
Okay, now we made the plane. We apply the scale, we want that size. And now we're gonna make a particle system out of it. For that, we click on particle properties and on this little plus here, now we have a particle system. We see already something is happening. You can see that I have a little camera movement just to tell a little bit you know, of the story. Like what is happening with this guy? He might be like super rich, a billionaire who made it when he was in a young age, but he sacrificed the love of his life or something like that. I don't know. What do I know about storytelling? Anyway, so it's, it's raining now and it's raining just as little blue balls. Uh, in that case, uh, gray balls, but we can change that very easily. So what we need to do here under the particle system, we see a little thing called a render, and here it says halo. But we don't want a halo, we want an object. But this object still needs to be made. So just somewhere outside the scene where we don't see it, I'm just going to make a little icosphere. Before you click anything else, click on this little thing and turn this to one. So now it's just a very simple object with enough geometry we shade smooth and because it's basically just a raindrop and raindrops are just round I guess I could just make it a little longer but that's not really necessary because through the motion blur gonna look like picture rain so uh, now we have to give it a material though. so we click here on new under my material um, remove this we don't need that and type in glass because water, as we probably know already, is basically just like glass material. So now this is glass. We don't really need to worry about that, but that's basically it. Now we're gonna go back to our plane here. Remember when we set it to object, now we have to actually apply this to the object. So, so we're gonna select the object we just did, and this is gonna be our particle. Now when we go to the first frame, we see when it's raining, it's raining our little water drops. Now we can adjust the scale and the randomness. Let's go 100 on the randomness here. But the scale should be pretty small. And if we don't have enough, we can increase this number here by as much as we want. If we want like very heavy rain, then we increase the number higher. And that's basically it. So let's increase this number by 10. Okay, now we're talking, that's like real rain now. And what would be a cool thing is, because right now the rain is just dropping from the top, which is totally fine, but we can use a force field to control the rain in a certain direction. To do that, we hit Shift A, go to force field. So now the wind blows it a little from camera right, which is cool, I guess. Again, not super necessary, but uh, an option, something you can use. Okay, now a little problem is that it starts raining when our scene starts, but I want the rain to be there already. So that means on uh, frame 40 is basically when the rain is actually picking up. So in our particle system, I'm gonna be like, hey, can you start the simulation 40 frames before my video actually starts? So frame start, negative 40. Let's do 41 just to be sure. And now it's already raining. Awesome. I'm gonna render a frame real quick so then we see what it actually looks like. So this is what it looks like right now. We have, I would say three main issues. The main uh, issue number one is that we have no motion blur activated. So all those water drops are perfectly sharp. 
that would be fine if our shutter speed would be like super fast, but it's not what we're going for. We go for realism here. Um, the second problem is our particle emitter here, we still see it, but we don't want to see it. So I have to turn that up. And the third one, obviously it's not moody yet, but we're going to fix that after. So let's turn on the motion blur. You can find this under the render properties and go far, far down and you see motion blur. Under, under the motion blur settings, you can see the shutter speed. 1.5 is what we want here because that's like real shot um, like normal shutter speed the way your eye would uh, perceive the motion blur so that's what we're going to use the second thing is we can still see our particle emitter so we go back to our plane here to our particle system and turn off show emitter now the emitter is not going to be shown still in the uh, viewport but not in the render and now we're gonna render another frame. And as you can see in the similar frames, you already can see the raindrops, which is exactly what we want. We don't see the emitter anymore. And now it's time to fix up the scene a little because I see some issues. Okay, my fire pit here is levitating. He's levitating a little. And we're gonna fix those little things. And then we're gonna make it real moody. Okay, in order to make it moody, we need haze. It's just like I would do that in real life with real cameras and real actors. I would add haze into the scene because that's going to make it very spooky and moody and uh, it's going to look great. And funny enough, this is actually fairly simple. What we're going to do is we're going to create a cube a volume cube, which is going to have basically most of our invisible area in the shot. This is how I'm going to do it. Shift A, cube. This cube, I'm going to make the size as big as necessary, but as small as possible, because the bigger the cube, the, um, the longer it's going to take to render. I'm just going to make it long enough. So it's definitely in the shot from the very beginning. Because the camera is moving in, making sure the camera is in the box from the very first frame. Right now it's sticking out to the ground, we don't need that. So I'm going to scale it down, bring it a little up, perfect. And again, Control A and apply the scale. Okay, now we're going to give this a new material. Delete the principle and give it a volume. Scatter. There you go. That we connect right into the volume. This thing, don't ask me why. Type 0.6. Okay, right now you see it's very dark because the density is on 1, which is very, very high. So usually I go from 0, 0, 0.001 uh, and from there I just go up until I like it. Unfortunately, you can't really see that in, in this viewport, but uh, that just means that you have to render it out or at least like render one frame and you at least see what it looks like. Already before it's even done, I can see, okay, I see haze, but I need more. And just be aware, this haze is gonna change your entire lighting situation. Sometimes you have to dial it in, having a little less light or more light or change the color temperature and we're going to do all of that once I'm satisfied with this look. All right, that looks already pretty awesome. So what I'm going to do is right now I'm using an HDRI for the lighting. I'm going to still use it, but I'm going to tone it down a lot. And then I'm going to use a sunlight, change it into blue and to make it look like it's the full moon or something like that. So this here is our HDRI. I'm going to bring the strength down. I'm going to add a light, sunlight, doesn't really matter where it is, you know, just bring it up here and just to see better and rotate it a little under the light settings. I'm going to change it to something bluish, whatever the moonlight light could be now. 
and save and render it again. And that looks pretty sick. And that's basically our moody scene. If that was something, you know, like a real project and I needed to be as good as possible, a few things I would change is the ground texture. I would, you know, make it a little higher res because it just doesn't look great. And besides that, I would add a little more detail on the windows, maybe make the windows wet or dirty. But other than that, that's all you need to make your scene really moody, you know, as if it was like a film noir or so. But really, it's, I could tell you as much as I want here, but what you really need is the experience. You need, need to work on your eye to figure out what is cinematic, what is moody. And you have to have an understanding about the lighting. It's, of course, you can just put haze and rain in every scene. And to be quite frankly, it's gonna make it better, sure. But you still need to train your eye. Like, it's not a coincidence that he's on my right third here. It's not a coincidence that this is on the left third here. It's not a coincidence that this is here. This is, this composition was on purpose, you know, and um, that's what I need you to, to do. And so you don't have to know everything, but by practice and by experiencing and by observing movies or, or other creators, and that way you can really get better, but definitely you've got to practice. The tutorial is pretty much over, but I'm still going to fix a few things. So if you want to hang out with me, feel free and talk to you in a few minutes. Okay, I'm done now, promise. So there's a few things I added. I, uh, most obviously I added this car here just to have a little more extra detail. The more interesting part is I added grass. So I complained about the, you know, shitty texture before, and now I fixed it by adding, I made like an, another plane, I made it another particle emitter. I had one grass model and you know, I emitted all kinds of grass all over the floor here, all over the ground. So now that's there. I also added another volumetric light or it's just a spotlight. I had to remove this window here so it actually can shine out just for a little more color contrast and more, you know, storytelling. Maybe his wife kicked him out or something. He cheated again, you know, men. And uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and make sure to like the video, subscribe and see you in the next video. Toodoo.